That's relatable sleep. Yeah, it is. It is. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our second global topic. We are so excited to have you guys here today, and we're excited to present on this topic. We actually made this presentation last semester when these fires started happening, and then because COVID hit, we never got to do our interactive workshops, so and now we're going to do it online for you guys, so thanks for joining us. Today, we're going to be talking about why is everything on fire? where what's on fire and what is the impact of these fires so now i'm going to pass it off to my colleague mea to get us started hi everybody so why the fuck is everything on fire it's a good question i ask myself this too um there are a few big reasons um the biggest of which the overarching big reason being climate change um climate change is causing um the, our global weather patterns and our local climate systems to be changing um, our global temperatures are rising um, we're having less precipitation and uh, larger droughts um, that are causing our forests to be drier and more able to light up quickly um, human activity is causing these fires to actually light up such as things like smoking people setting fires gender reveals dumb stuff like that um, so human activity is what is sparking the fire, but the overarching change in our environment and our global weather patterns is what is causing um, these fires to be happening more. I'm trying to unmute, sorry. Okay, so fires are becoming bigger and they're lasting longer. And these are happening all over the US, not just in Colorado. So this is something we really need to be paying attention to and seeing, educating yourself on what you can do and like prevent things from happening. All right, and now we would like you guys to think of a few places around the world um, where wildfires have happened. So go ahead and drop them in the chat. And we also put this link in the chat for you. It should be the very first comment. So you can copy and paste that into your browsers and it should open up an interactive map where you can click on different countries. Um, and Francis is gonna pull it up for us real quick. Yes, here it is. Um, so this is what you should see on your screen if you follow the link. And then you can click on the different countries and see more information about wildfires that have happened there. So feel free to drop some places into the chat. It can be um, countries or more specific areas. Australia, for sure. Can you click on that for us? Do you just click on the... I don't know why they're you can just talk about places. Yeah, place of California. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. Yeah, Colorado is definitely feeling it a lot right now. Awesome. Uh, Arizona. Yeah. yeah oh, crazy yeah. fires. Any other places? Texas, yeah. All right. Okay, so at the beginning of 2020, as I'm sure everyone remembers, um, Australia was having some of the worst wildfires they have ever seen. Um, this was mostly caused by a record breaking drought um, and just like the heat waves that were tearing through down there at the time. Um, I'm sure you guys remember seeing stuff all over social media about the fires down there, but I just remember seeing like pictures and videos of wildlife koalas that got injured or killed and also like so many people were displaced from their homes because of these fires and it was just like made a huge impact on me. 
So I'm from New Zealand, which is like pretty close um, to Australia. And when I was there at the beginning of the year, um, this is a picture that I took in New Zealand and Auckland, um, which is still thousands of miles across um, the Tasmanian Sea from uh, Australia, but we still looked like this and it was still this very apocalyptic looking sky it was raining ash the air quality was horrible so it just shows that um the impact can is not just in the country where the fire is the impact is all over the world and can be seen in countries even if they're like across bodies of water So because of all the fires, the air quality has been absolute shit pretty much all over the world at the moment. And then also many of these places, um, many people in these places have been forced to evacuate with stay at home orders. And um, in that top right hand corner picture, that's um, people who were at a beach who actually had to be evacuated because the air quality was so horrible. And then this is, think about the bigger impact on medically vulnerable people, people with like compromised lungs who are really feeling these impacts. And, sorry, I'm not doing it. Okay. And another um, big impact obviously wasn't just like on the humans, but it was also like on the wildlife, um, which mainly um, affected um, koalas, kangaroos, like all the animals you can think of there um, that were just um, habitat loss and obviously that were injured and they didn't have water or food. Um, and apart from the like wild animals being affected, domesticated animals, also like livestock um, were like you can see in the bottom right picture were a big impact, um, were impacted largely from this um, fires. And this is important because the livestock is one source of income for a lot of these people. So obviously if they're losing that livestock, they're losing income and it turns into like a little ripple effect. Right. And then obviously, um, with that, as um, Amelia talked about, the air quality was not good for either humans or wildlife. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so um, many of the uh, like environmental people in the field, nobody predicted that the fires were going to be this bad. Um, all of the simulations that had been done did not predict them to be anywhere near this size. So these fires were a huge wake up call for everybody that we have some serious um, that we have some serious like things that we need to do and that we really need to wake up and realize that things are gonna keep getting worse, especially um, the warmer that our planet continues to get, the more thrown off things are gonna be and the larger chance of these huge fires. So these fires in the, are, in the Amazon are due to clearing of land and agriculture. Can you guys hear me? Can you? Put a thumbs up if you guys can hear me. <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you, Slade. Um, yeah, because we're all in the same room together. So, um, There are fires in Amazon every year due to clearing of land and agriculture by the logging industry. And uh, that these have made the fires burn three times as bad and the amazon is home to um so many different types of animals they're home to over 3,000 plant species um over 400 different types of reptiles and it's just really important that we preserve their land and not catch it on fire so that way that they can live and thrive because a lot of these endangered species have become are really getting close to these fires 
or have become endangered because of the fires. Um, so their homes are being burned down just as well as ours. All right, and as I'm sure many of you have heard, the Amazon is the lungs of the planet. So this is definitely a huge hit to our air quality. Um, a lot of this land is being cleared for agricultural purposes through burning, and it's not slowing down at all. Um, a lot of the beef in the US is um, from Brazil, so we are direct um, drivers of this deforestation and these fires that just get out of control from the land clearing. Um, this is also very impactful on the indigenous populations that rely on the Amazon for, um, for their lifestyle. Sorry, I saw the chat go. Um, <laughs> for their lifestyles and just their homes. This is their land and um, it is definitely being encroached upon, so. So um, indigenous fire stewardship is something that has happened for thousands of years. Um, it's intergenerational teachings of fire related beliefs and practices that native tribes um, and groups of people across the world have um, been a part of. It's about learning to live with fire and about learning to adapt to the ecosystem to prepare for fires. Um, traditional fire knowledge um, comes from indigenous um, knowledge that has been passed on for generations and many um, practices that we see firefighters doing today are because of indigenous knowledge, such as um, pre-chosen burning areas, like burning down um, certain areas to prepare for if a fire was to happen. Um, it's all about um, cultural um, connection with the land and about making sure that all of the people who need the land are gonna be able to have the access that they need to it. So if, um, we all need to just be aware of the fact that indigenous people have been pushing um, this knowledge and this information for centuries. And if Hi, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about something closer to home. So a few of you have suggested that California was being burned and you were correct, but it's been burning for many years from 2018 to 2019, this specific fire the Kincaid, uh, Kincaid fire was burning for 13 days. Um, and you can see how many acres it burned. And it destroyed over hundreds of residential homes, buildings, businesses, people's livelihood. Um, it also damaged the economy greatly because of all the vineyards that were burned. As you can see um, in the picture, it, it just destroys everything. Um, and there's ways we can try and help um, keep this contained by like not having fire near you or not lighting fire when it's very dry, just making sure you protect the area. Also, the magnitude of these fires can be seen from space. Um, in 2018, there was a fire in California again, and you can just see how they're progressing. There's more and more. There's one every year. There's one in 2018, one in 2019, one in 2020. It's just going to keep going. Um, so you can see this from space and how much it's affecting this earth. Um, we try and help with firefighters and trying to control the fires, but they're not doing much um, to contain them. They keep burning. So even closer, closer to home are some fires that I know we have all recently been affected by, um, such as the Cameron Peak Fire, which has burned over a hundred, over 103,000 acres, um, as well as the Williams Fork Fire, which is burning 13,000 acres. Um, I know that these fires have affected everybody because just the other day, about a week ago, it was raining ash from the sky. Um, if you happen to not step out that day, I know you saw it on social media. Um, that smoke that comes from the sky is extremely bad for our health, as we mentioned before. And the fires are just extremely bad for people's livelihoods. Um, the fire, the Cameron Peak fire is four times the size, has grown four times the size just over the past Labor Day um, weekend. And 
the mini the dry trees and the pine just keep the fires burning and burning and burning so there's really not um it's very hard to control even though that the as Lex said the firefighters are out there doing as much as they can um it's super extremely hard to control and this is right in our backyards i know a lot of people have family members in these areas um feel free to share your stories in the chats if you guys have anything that you want to talk about And then there's some other fires that are happening in California are like the North Complex fire, which has burned over 273,000 acres. And then there's the Creek fire, which has burned over 244 acres. Um, that is a lot of land that California is losing. And California already doesn't have enough space as is. So <laughs> they really need that open space. We really need those trees. There's so many species living in those forests. There's so many tree species, animal species. Um, and so it's really devastating that these fires are happening. Um, so we're going to just show a video of some fire chiefs kind of talking about the impacts of climate change. They're obviously the ones on the front lines um, who are seeing this every day. And I think that everybody um, has like respect for fire chiefs because they see all this. So um, we're gonna just. Yeah, we'll put the link somewhere, but basically, basically, um, they were just kind of talking about how fires are getting bigger, they're getting harder to handle, and that all of us as citizens need to be aware of it because although they are out there doing their job, we need to do our job too. So every, so every oh, is this your intro? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so um, as we continue to talk about like the fires and climate change, um, the reason that, that um, we mentioned fire with climate change is because as temperatures have rise, um, we've also seen a peak in fires. So as you can see in this, um, sorry, in the image, um, there's been like a correlation over the years that a lot of people don't take into consideration, but it is very present and it is very visual that um, as we get hotter in this um, earth, the fires are going to continue. So that's how we um, need to like, um, be cautious of like um, climate change because it does affect the fires. 
Hmm. All right, so fire seasons are lasting way longer than they have ever lasted in history. Um, and this is a concern because the longer that fires burn, the bigger of area that is getting destroyed and more damaging cost for everyone. Biopic. So every year, the amount of acres being burned are increasing. In California, like, or even on Sunday, 156 square miles were burned on Sunday. Like, that's insane. Um, and it was just north of Los Angeles in the mountains. So it's like, it's happening from the 1960s to present day. It's insane. So what are some things that you guys think we can do to prevent climate change that is causing these fires? Um, you can comment in the chat or you can unmute yourself. It's okay, don't be scared. We don't bite very hard. <laughs> Yep, yeah. those are all things. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah meat consumption is huge. Be that guy. <laughs> hey, just, just a little like throw in there. We're having a vegan food for thought event on October 16th. Stay tuned for details. <laughs> <laughs> okay um so these are some of the biggest sources of greenhouse gases which is fueling climate change so you guys can read for yourself that these are some of the biggest things um as you guys mentioned industrial agriculture is a huge one and as we talked about that is what is causing most of the so all, all of these things are things that are causing climate change. This doesn't come up. So we know that we are the first generation to feel the impact of climate change. And we are the last one who can do something about it. I know we've just given this presentation with all these really scary, very um, daunting like things, but I think that there is so much hope in the fact that you all showed up and you all care about this and you want to hear about it and you want to do something about it. So even though it's so scary, I truly believe that we can make a difference and that every single one of us, when we work together, um, we can solve this crisis together. Um, the world has never seen a crisis like this before, but we've also never been at such good resources and understanding and knowledge. So what better time and what better people than us to do it? So, yeah, we are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the generation um, who is going to do something about it and um, we're, we will talk to you guys about a few different things that you guys can do to actually make that change happen. Okay. All right, so what are some next steps? How can we embody the phoenix and emerge from the ashes <laughs> reborn like we were talking about before this meeting? Um, so number one is join Earth Guardians. So everyone who's here right now, you guys are doing great already. Um, number two is vote. So make sure that you are registered to vote. That is so important as elections are coming up in November. Um, 
Also huge and kind of going along with voting is holding your elected officials accountable for acting on climate and making policies and legislature to um, support the climate. Um, you can also follow us on Instagram at earth underscore UNCO. Um, come to our next events. As Emmy mentioned, we have a, a vegan cookout called Food for Thought coming on. Um, and then, you know, we all talk about it all the time, but just reducing your own carbon footprint. And a lot of you guys had great ideas that you put into the chat. So that's awesome. And lastly, educating your peers, talking about it, talking about our discussions on these Zoom calls and getting your friends to come to them, um, getting your friends to come to events is all super helpful. Yeah, I just wanted to elaborate on the last point that Kanil said. Um, one of the most important things that you guys can do, especially because you guys are already sustainability um, conscious and participating in that type of lifestyle every single day, one of the biggest things that you can do is advocate and try to get your friends that don't think about sustainability every day to come to one of our meetings or to register to vote, get them involved, get them to know the same things about it that you know. I'm at parties. And I will literally be drunk out of my mind and still be advocating for the environment. I, I, will, I will sit there and still talk about it. I don't care if it annoys people or bores people because eventually you will talk to the right person that wants to hear it and then you might change their mind. Um, so with that being said, um, let's put our passion into action and demand that our leaders act meaningfully towards climate change. So we have these little letters and you can write your own letter to your representative as well. But we have these little postcards. Um, some of them are empty. Some of them have a pre-written message on it that just basically says, um, we at UNCO stand for climate change action and we want our representatives to do the same. These will be available at our table for pickup tomorrow at Tuesday. We'll be, um, we should be there 12 to one um, outside the UC. We'll have these if you guys want to sign them and send them to the representative or if you guys want to make your own we got blank ones or if you totally totally want to make your own go for it do not forget to follow us on instagram it's run by tori and camille it's beautiful and you can find out a lot of information on it and also join our group me if you're not already in it you can put your number in the chat Do you guys have any questions, any comments? We'd love to hear what you think. Unmute us. Unmute. Izzy! Abby and Sydney, did you guys learn anything? Did anybody have a favorite fact that they learned or anything? Come on, Slade. You go. I thought it was interesting how, how, like, how big the fires in California have been and that you could see them from space. I thought that was really interesting because I didn't know that. Yeah, that was something I didn't know either that um, we had an Earth Guardians member named Parker. Um, she, what's her major, Parker's major? Oh, well her major is biology, but she came and gave us these really cool satellite images of um, some fires that her teacher showed her and so did Emmy. She showed us a lot of cool satellite images. Um, and it's just insane how the world just like turns red. Like that just shows you like how massive these fires are. It's crazy. That's like Abby and I thought it was interesting that, um, <laughs> sorry, that there are like so many fires all over Colorado, um, just like currently all at like this.
Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Do you guys have anybody that's been affected by these fires? I know I have family in California that had to be dis uh, displaced from it and they actually had to move because there wasn't any way they were gonna live there anymore just with all the fires happening. So is there anything like that for you guys that you guys were affected by? I mean, my, my grandparents in Oregon, I said this earlier, they're, uh, they mostly have to stay inside because, you know, the air quality is like over 500. So there's that. Um, Jill had put in the comments that breathing the air in some places, like smoking 12 cigarettes. Um, I think that is the probably the craziest thing I think I've experienced throughout all of these fires is seeing the ash fall from the sky. Like I literally thought the world was ending. I don't know if anybody else felt like that. It was crazy, wasn't it? Who went outside that day? The ash was falling from the sky. <laughs> Coming from Maryland, and, oh, what? coming from Maryland, and like seeing that, that the uh, the sky basically like, was on fire and ash was raining down. And then the next day, you know, it was snowing. That's that was pretty shocking. Yeah, we had that is really shocking. And we got Izzy yeah, say that. Friends and family in Washington had their houses burned down and their vehicles. Like that's just, that's just insane. What do you guys do in your personal lives to, you know, try to combat climate change or, you know, maybe something creative that you guys could share with us? Um, I was vegan for two years. Um, now I'm vegetarian, but. I haven't eaten meat in five years now. Um, except for bacon, um, um, I don't eat any meat. You just, you just killed Emmy. <laughs> <laughs> that used to be my favorite too. Honestly, bacon was the last meat that I ever ate. I had an omelet at IHOP with bacon in it, and then it's been seven years now since I had. Bacon's a good one. I don't have it often, but it's the only meat I have. So, sorry, Emmy. It's the effort that counts. No, I'm sorry. I appreciate it. I just heard my voice and I wanted to die. I know that a lot of people in my life are very like conscious about my my efforts to try and get them to try things. Um, but just the other day, I had someone have a a vegan taco and they just loved it because it just made them feel good afterwards and it was just really good without using any meat or dairy. So it's like. Thing, things like that, it may, it may be hard, but they'll try it eventually if they really care for you and what you believe in and the world, if you explain it enough. Yeah, and I think that's like a perfect way to wrap it all up. Um, the number one thing to do is to advocate you guys because we are all ready doing what we're supposed